Today, not only am I a very lucky boy, but I'm bringing you guys along for the ride. David Ledbetter has coached numerous major champions and helped redefine the golf swing on multiple occasions. But today he's got his work cut out because he's going to help me hit my driver better here at the Golf Son Ledbetter Academy. Guys, my name is James Robinson and welcome to this YouTube channel. If you do enjoy golf videos, make sure you do consider hitting that subscribe button below. Leave a like on this channel. And apart from that, I'm a little bit nervous. Should I be nervous, Chris? Yes. I should be nervous. Right, let's get in there. So it wouldn't be a video without us prying round and see just how amazing this facility is. It is absolutely amazing. We have just been shown round by Justin here at the Golf Sun Ledbetter Academy. But Chris, there's a gym. We don't know what one of these is. We don't know what one of these is. There's some machines that I think can help you get a little bit more bigger and probably better at golf and stronger. Is there a sauna? I probably, I wouldn't have thought so. But this is what we are here for. So this is the Golf Sun GDR here at the Golf Sun Ledbetter Academy. And this is very similar to the system we are gonna be using at home in our brand new simulator. And this is the system that Mr. Ledbetter is gonna hopefully get me out driving Chris, hitting more fairways and generally taking money off you more. Money? So I'll have had a lesson with Pete Cowan and David Ledbetter and you'll probably still win. Correct. I like your thinking. <laughs> right, we will have a bit of a warm up. I'm hoping for a driver lesson, but I'm gonna hit a couple of irons just to start with, because it's been a busy few days, Chris, hasn't it? Nothing but consistent, Chris. That's nothing but consistent, Chris. Ooh, the face was open. So come here and look, Chris, you can see. So obviously that wasn't a great shot, but I can see that last one here. So this is what we're gonna have the ability of. Oh. I'm, I'm nervous, Chris. I was nervous with my lesson with Pete Cowan as well, though. I think it's time we get the driver out. I mean, three out of, three out of four were very good, weren't they? Do you reckon I'll just say give up? <laughs> right guys, so I've had the warm up. Um, it went okay actually, the warm up. So for a change, which uh, usually that means I'm gonna play bad. So we'll see what happens with that. <laughs> um, but that David, happened. thank you very much for your time. So before we start, really appreciate it. You've got well, a fantastic well, facility Jeff. here. Thank you. Um, you've just been showing us this, which I'll, you, you got a bit of that, Chris, did you earlier? Yeah. So we'll start on screen. It's amazing because it's almost like, I'm not saying you've ever watched one of my videos, David, but it's almost like you have, because that could absolutely transform my golf anyway. Well, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to go straight in? Yeah, go ahead. So go my on. problem is, it's yeah. either, it's either when it's good, it's good, mm. but when it's bad, it's right. very bad. Right. So okay. Without uh, without saying any foul language. <laughs> <laughs> That's the general bad there. one. You got, you know. Uh, You've got plenty of mass to have plenty of speed there. Absolutely, James, yeah. It's been, a, there we go, it's without been a big being Christmas. Rude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see me have a look. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So have you, you ever, you work on your game much? Or you? I try to, yeah. Not so much as I used to do. I used to... Yeah. yeah. You used to practice a few times a week. Now it's more playing for fun. Yeah. But obviously it's only really fun when... When you're playing well. Exactly. Yeah, so that's something which <laughs> yeah, interesting. for me uh, yeah. need to try yeah. and improve well, on. Yeah, the great thing, you know, I mean, the thing I like about Golf Zone, uh, you know, with it's the modern approach, shall we say, you know, with being able to analyze, et cetera, et cetera. And doing it indoors to me is a, is a big plus. Yeah. I mean, it's funny how even though you're hitting into a screen and you're seeing the results and so on and so forth, but it's, it's not as demoralizing for players if they're, you know, they're topping yeah. shots, they're losing balls. Topping or... shots, Chris. We'll overlay yours yesterday. <laughs> oh, he's topped it. He's topped it. I mean, it's, uh, it's not your best start. <laughs> <laughs> but so I, I think it's a great learning environment. 
and so and obviously screen golf as they refer to it is in Korea yeah uh, I mean which is huge I mean bearing in mind they play more golf indoors and outdoors and mm -hmm. uh, you know we've obviously starting all these facilities um, in the states now and it's, it's catching on over here now mm -hmm. especially in the metropolitan areas like we've just opened opened one up in New Jersey and just across the river from um, well, you're basically down in New York. Yeah, you know? yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So the, it's uh, it's interesting how um, you know we're, the number of people have signed up for memberships. Uh, it's golf uh, golf zone range by Ledbetter, and yeah. so there's an obviously a practice component. There's an instructional component. The golf zone facility and uh, really get a lot out of say an mm. hour's practice. Yeah, and that's what it's all about. So. But there again, you know, it's the old saying, you know, practice does not necessarily make perfect. Perfect no. practice makes perfect. I always say it's three things to get the golf swing right or to make changes. It's concept, visual, having a good picture of what you're trying to do. And then the final thing is sort of feel. Because yeah. the feel is you want to be able to take a feel out onto the golf course. You don't want to be mm. going out on the, on the course. Yeah. Like, I always find when I play well, I have kind of one swing thought, yeah. and that's probably the feel base, isn't it? Because yeah, you can, and you guys probably relate to this at home if you're watching, guys. What is your swing thought that when you go out and play, I think of this one thing, and I generally play a little bit better? Yeah, I, I think it's always good to have something to focus on. Mm -hmm. If it's too detailed or you've got too many of them, mm -hmm. you know, I, that's why it astounded me when I asked Jack Nicholas a few years ago. I said, Jack, so how many things do you think about on the golf course? He said, well, I could never think of more than five. And I thought, oh my goodness, five, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, the average person think of five things, they'd be on the tee for about 10 minutes over each shot thinking yeah, about yeah. it, you know? So, so if you can get it down to maybe one key thought, you know, remember obviously Jack Nichols was a genius in many, many yeah, respects. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we can discount him, but for most people say, you know, one swing thought is, is, is key and normally sort of early in the swing whereby mm -hmm. hopefully that affects things that happens later in the swing. And, you know, you seem to analyze your swing fairly well. Let, let me see one more there, if okay. I may. And uh, maybe this, we can this get, is the one, Chris. Maybe you can get a visual of, from you down the line here. We can see it would be good, I think. So we can. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, I, you know, I like, you know, you've got, you've got some good speed, you've got uh, com good compactness. Mm -hmm. It just looks like there's a sort of quite a bit of sort of roll away here, as we yeah. like to call it. And then, you know, there may be, if, you know, if the body gets a little quick from there, it's going to be a little late. If, if it's, if the hands get a little quick from there, yeah. it could be a little early. Club so, face control is probably yeah. one of the issues for me, exactly, definitely. Yeah. Exactly. So we have a little tool here and because I say we've, yeah, I'm always sort of thinking of swing aids, shall we call them? You know, I remember the, the aids. clicker one. Yeah, the, that was when I was a junior. Everyone had one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. Yeah, and so it's it's to me that's 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 what imparts the feel to a player, mm -hmm. rather than thinking about all everything else. But so so let's let's see how this works. Shall okay. We? Okay. So you go ahead there. You just take your set up there, and uh, I'll. All right. So I'm going to put an alignment stick down here for okay. you. Okay. We'll get a couple out here, James. All right, so remembering that the, the pattern's going to be pretty much the same, yeah. whether you've got a nine or a, or a driver for that matter. So I'm just going to put this down on your, on your toe line, okay? Yep. So we're going to be aiming, so this is your, we'll call that your target line yep. here. So we'll just make, see if this, if I'm close enough here, I'm just going to, put, I want you to put the club right on top of it. There you go, good, good. So now, so the tendency would be, obviously for the sake of time, I'm not going to take it off and on, but mm -hmm. this just clips on. Uh, but your tendency would be to sort of do this, where this sort yeah. of rolls pretty early, right? Yeah. So we can see that, to me, the common denominator really with virtually all the top players is where the hands appear to move in and the club head stays out. So we can, we, and you can look at, if you look at this line here, this yellow line, okay? Yeah. It's, we, we call this a straightaway because this actually needs to look straight away at this point. Imagine you're in a clock phase. So this is six o'clock here, yep. nine o'clock there. Obviously, if you're lefty, it'll be three o'clock. Yep. But so we're trying to get to nine o'clock. That's that's the whole the whole thing. Where this is now parallel to the, yeah, to the yeah. alignment stick. You see, right, so that to a lot of people who sort of tend to roll it like you do, they say, well, the club phase feels way outside. Yeah, it does. Yeah, and it feels closed. Yeah. You see, but in actual fact, if you look at... Square to the arc, isn't it? Yeah, it's square yeah. to the arc. And look, in actual fact, it has gone inside the line, but it hasn't gone rapidly inside the line, <laughs> right? So we can see it's... 
There we go. And yeah. literally, the takeaway is a very short movement. Literally, where the, the top of the club moves maximum about a foot, and the, the head moves about three feet. Now, obviously, it varies depending mm -hmm. if you've got a driver in hand, it's going to be a little bit more. But literally, you know, say a foot, head maybe three yeah. feet, and the butt of the club is, is actually moving slightly inwards there. So it's like a little circle inside a big circle. It's a little circle where the hands follow, a big circle where the club head follows, and the little circle always stays inside the big circle. What happens, and especially you see with, with a lot of club golfers, they whip that thing in behind them. They take mm -hmm. the club back and say, that's why I'm not a big fan of the word takeaway, but people use it so often. Yeah. You know, it's actually you're moving away because you're actually trying to move it away with your core. Okay? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, you know, think of your belly button moving the club away. Yeah. And as long as you keep your left arm connected to your chest, that's all the technique you want. And that's why you see so many players today rehearsing this move. Yeah, I like that. It's what we, yeah, call, yeah. we call it the modern waggle. Because in the old days, you know, players, you know, yeah. even Ben Hogan sort of had this sort of look going. And mm -hmm. even Jack Nichols had a bit of, you know, a bit of this going. And, but, you know, to me, I love that old saying, as ye waggle, so shall ye swing. The old Scotsman saying that, but most yeah. people, their old waggles, hopefully they didn't swing it like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's just flick the, It's like flicking a bee off the end of a club or something, but you can see. So, and, and actually the way to train yourself, is I'm gonna move this out of the way, is to actually hit the odd ball starting mm -hmm. from there. I always say you wanna split the swing up into two. Yeah. The start, okay, which sort of sets the trend as far as the way the hands yeah. and where the club heads are moving, plus the fact that you've got this connection between the hands and your body. So mm -hmm. this is what we call the synchronization of the swing. Yeah. But you want, actually want to hit balls from there. So just make a, make a swing from there. Complete your backswing and go. And you'll find it'll, it'll probably put the club on a slightly more vertical plate, slightly. Yeah, rather than, and the yeah. club will be, you know, not that with your build you want a long swing. Yeah, yeah. But it'll probably it'll definitely get the club more online because yours yes. tends to be a little bit flat and laid off yeah. because of your early roll. Yeah. So it's like you, if you fix the start, you know, there's a good chance of fixing the end. Yeah, and the funny thing is, we mentioned about that one swing thought earlier on in the lesson. And my swing thought's always been just try and pick it up. Try, and I've never really had the... Right. Like when you said keep the left arm to the chest, Right. Obviously, I mean, I'm PJ Pro myself. I've given golf lessons, but that's not something that I've tied into what I've been trying to do. Right. So that's right. really yeah. Well, helpful. that's well, people too tend to. In other words, for somebody who swings it inside, the natural the natural reaction will be, okay, well, come on, swing it out and feel like you're swinging outside. Yeah. You know, but that's really not the thing. Disconnected, isn't it? Yeah, it's disconnected exactly. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So let's do that again. So take your setup there. Do you want me to hit a ball? Shall I set yeah. this onto iron? Yeah, let's set it onto iron. There we go. Isn't it funny as well because. Uh, what is a seven? We'll go with that. Whenever I've given lessons as well, or anyone that goes for a driver lesson, you always hit a few drives and then it always comes back to something more manageable, doesn't it, to work on the technique <laughs> of the swing? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So let's just make sure this is sort of on your toe line. Yeah. Okay. Because the, the alignment has to be key to this as well, doesn't it? Exactly. Exactly right. So, you know, you, you sort of get your initial target line here and then you get this one parallel to it. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's a good way of being able to sort of make sure you're lined up green and then just say just just that's it and, and relax your arms you know the, yeah. the 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 thing is when you sort of try to position it you've got to literally swing it yeah okay so just relax the arms you can see so that's why your navel mm. and your core really wants to feel it's almost like if i had a medicine ball here okay heavy medicine ball okay the only reason these are moving is because this is moving yeah yeah you okay, yeah. see what i'm saying so yeah, I've, I've, I've coined a phrase, I read a book in 1989 called The Golf Swing, which was, uh, we used David Frost as a model, and, and it was really the basis of our, all our, of our teaching um, all over the world, of, you know, mm -hmm. all the academies and training teachers at all the golf zone facilities, etc. is that the dog wags the tail, okay? So <laughs> yeah. you think of it, instead of, most people, the tail wags the dog, right? Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, the, yeah. The dog being the body, your body, and the tail being the, you know, obviously the hands, mm -hmm. the arms, and the club. So right. So let's just 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 rehearse that again. And you'll you'll hit a shot there. You might take a few shots just to get used to the timing of this. Because, but I, I actually predicted years ago somebody would actually start the swing from here, and because they say that yeah. most issues happen in the first three feet of the ball. You know, That'd be it, so interesting to try and play around a golf like that, wouldn't it? Oh yeah. I mean, I've got players that do it because yeah, it's yeah. like they. You know, actually, I've got a play on the European tour, young player Sean Crocker, and I mean, he stripes it for me. He says, "I'm." I'm mm -hmm. 
Honestly, he said, I really, I'm threatening to actually stop from here. I said, yeah. well, that would, that would cause some uh, interest, that's right. for sure, you know, or create some interest, yeah. I should say. But anyway, so take your dress there. There you go, and just relax. And so here, here's, the, here's the test here, James. Okay, well, here's the final test here. So I've got the club here. Yeah. Okay, now I want you to bring your feet round and face me. Just get your feet. Okay, now put the club down. You're in the same position you were to dress. Yeah. It's really inter a little test there. <laughs> yeah, because you see, right. because, you know, I mean, obviously, if you were do what, okay, start where you were, just to show you, and we'll let you hit a couple. If you were, you know, your tendency to do this, yeah. okay, now turn around and face me. I mean, look, you wouldn't start like that, would you? Hopefully. <laughs> it's like, no. So. I suppose because all it's doing is moving around on an axis, isn't it? Yeah, that's all it is. Yeah. Exactly. So you're just shifting your dress position here, and really the business area of the swing starts from here. Yeah. You set it on plane, and I'm not suggesting, hey, Hey, some people said it's steeper, you know, I mean, I've always been a big believer in maybe setting it a little steeper. Some players want it on one plane, some mm -hmm. players want a, a flatter swing, some players, or you know, teachers, I should say, want a more upright swing. Some coaches want, you know, a bowed wrist, yeah. or, you know, a neutral wrist. So, hey, whatever. But the, the key is, get your start right. From there, you can do whatever the heck you like. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. All right. All right, so just let's do it again. So soft with the arms, the first movement there, you can see. There you go, see? Hands around. I wasn't even looking at that then. I was trying to just remember what, what we did. All right, you can yeah. look where that is now. Yeah. Perfect. All right, so just relax and go ahead and from there. So stop again. Yep. All right, so get it to that point. All right. Let's see here. I'm just going to just twit. There you go. I tried a bit much there, didn't I? Yeah. That's it. Right, do it again. Don't manipulate it. Just let it sway. There you go. That's it. Perfect. Right, now cut. Finish your back swing and go. It feels different. I mean, because yeah. it's, it's actually, if anything, it's actually more efficient because it's actually moving on a more direct route to the top there. Yeah, yeah. Try one again. All right, so just make the first movement. There you go. See that? I mean, that looks pretty natural. I mean, yeah, it, it, it feels like if it's not, given time, I feel like that could be something yeah. that. Yeah, so just complete your back swing and go ahead and hit it. Yeah. So um, it's, it's, it'll I'm give really you a, a really that. good yeah. feel. And to me, see, the visual is so important because once you've seen that, and yeah. you just repeat it. But, yeah. you know, you, to me, I would say your, your inconsistency is probably the takeaway. Yeah. And I say, I would say virtually 100% of swing errors can be traced back to the takeaway. Yeah. Um, can I get one of these? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll get you one, absolutely. Thank you very much for your time. Hey, no problem. I really appreciate I hope that, that helps. It does help. So I think, guys, what we've learned there is there's hope. <laughs> yeah, there's hope, hope. There's hope. Um, work on that takeaway with all the clubs. Then it's going to go through to the drive. Then we'll hit more fairways, hit longer drives, and beat Chris even more. Just, a, just a, one little story. So I remember when I joined Callaway way over 20 years ago. Eddie Callaway is still alive, and he says, "David, you and I were in the same business." I said, "Really? Eddie? Why is that?" He said, "Well, we're in the business of selling hope." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so if you think about hey, the Callaway sell clubs because people hope they're going to hit it longer and better, yeah. and, you know, longer and further and straighter and so on, but uh, well, longer and straighter. And uh, you know, people take lessons from us in, in, in the hope that they're going to improve. So yeah. 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 Well, on that note, we'll finish. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed thank that, you. smash that subscribe button below. What a fantastic day at the Golf Sun at Ledbetter Academy. I'm proud to see you all at exactly the same time tomorrow. Thank you very much. Hey, that was pleasure, awesome. Man. Yeah, yeah, really, really helpful. Pleasure. Cheers. All right, man. Yeah, good.